Hello, how's it going? It is Andrew Robinson here, back at you with another Max MSP tutorial. If you saw my last one, we talked about doing feedback loops, and guess what? That's what we're going to be doing this time too, except we're going to be doing it with 3D objects. That's right, grid shapes. Um, so first and foremost, let's just see what that is. Uh, and to see that, we need to do what we always do, which is build a jit.world window. So I'm going to unlock my patch, double click, create a new object, type in jit.world, say at floating one, so it's floating, and at FSA one, so uh, it's full screen anti-aliasing, at FS menu bar zero. Uh, these are properties I just always like to have for my jit.world. And now we have our jit.world window. I'm going to create a toggle, attach it in there, turn that on, and we see it's now rendering. So to see our 3D object that we're going to do this effect with, we need to put that into that world. So we're going to type in shape, which generates a 3D shape, uh, like this sphere that you see here. So then we're going to say at position 0, 0, negative 2 to push it back. And you notice it's got these points. I just want it to be smooth. So I'm going to say smooth shading 1 at lighting enable 1. And that uh, that doesn't really make it that smooth. It does make it smooth, but not that smooth. We can make it smoother. We can say dim 200, 200. And now we have a nice round circle. Uh, and we want to do a feedback loop with this circle to get all kinds of cool crazy effects and the easiest way I've discovered to do that is to use the jit.world object itself. Yes, in fact, we can use this jit.world object to create a feedback loop. What we want to do to do this technique, which I haven't seen anywhere else um, except here in this tutorial, we're going to say output texture one. <laughs> um, we're going to turn the toggle off and back on so it re-renders, and now we're going to be outputting a texture from this outlet, which we can convert back down into a matrix using this jit.gl.async read object, which um, is pretty fascinating uh, that it lets us convert GL texture objects down to jitter matrix objects. That is a useful, uh, very useful tool. It does slow down the frame rate a lot. Um, but we're going to see some techniques for handling that as well. Um, but basically, now that this is uh, converting our texture to a jitter matrix again, we can just loop it right back into this jit.world because this takes video input and it's a frame behind, so it'll create a feedback loop just like that. The only thing we need to do in between is uh, give it some kind of effect to iterate off of. So I'm going to say something like jit.rota and we're gonna set our anchor points to be the center of our jit.world, which the size by default is 1280 by 960. So we're gonna do anchor 640 and anchor y 480, because that's half of each of the x and y values. So it'll put our anchor points right in the center. And then we're gonna say something like zoom 1.1 for, oops, for both of them, zoom y 1.1 and then we just attach this to this, which we can do now because that's what this object lets us do. Patch that right back in there and bam, we now have this beautiful iteration where our 3D object is zooming out and it works just like that. That already is really cool and took me uh, four or five years of max programming to figure out. And <laughs> now you know that and we can do some cool things with this like uh, get some fun animations going and say we add a cycle in here and do something like that and we say we're going to take the peak amp so we get a cool cycle ramp going uh, which is from 0 to 1 so we can then scale 0 to 1 to be I don't know 0 to 640 no let's just do the whole thing our whole window size for our X and our whole window size for our Y and do prepend anchor underscore x for this guy. Attach that right in there. And oh, you notice it starts moving, and that is a cool animation. We're just going to patch our y in there right along to change this x to a y and patch that right in there. And it didn't patch, patch that right in there. Cool, now it did. 
and look at that wiggly boy go okay cool so now there you go uh we've got some animation happening in our feedback iteration which is a really cool effect and you can do so much with 3d objects in this very simple technique um i'm gonna show you guys that if we attach this jit dot <coughs> fps gui object into our jit dot world object we're sitting below 30 frames a second right now and that's because we are rendering this at a high def speed if we go into presentation mode and i'm going to add this guy to presentation mode too if we go into presentation mode we'll see we get a boost slightly maybe like one more frame in our uh, fps and you could tell that the performance went slightly better over here um, and if we delete this that's going to actually make it increase even more too you see now it's like slightly smoother but we're still sitting just like probably under 30 frames a second if not right at 30 frames a second and if we had a lot more effects going on with this uh it could be very very slow um so to do that we can we can we can fix this issue slightly by lowering the dimension of our dot world which if we do something like half the value of what it standardly is to this which is now the size of our window and we just adjust all our hard-coded values to meet that it's 40 and this down to 480 now we'll see it is already running so much more smoothly um, quality is definitely not as great you can see some of these edges are now more pixelated but um you know that's max msp sometimes i guess uh if anybody out there watching this tutorial who maybe knows a little bit more than me has some better advice for maybe how to get a high definition render using this technique uh let me know i'd be happy to share that information i'd be happy to learn that information myself um, otherwise, this is a really easy way to do some feedback iteration stuff with a 3D model in Max MSP. So hopefully you guys learned something you didn't know before. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to go over, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.